And here we are. We're uh, very fortunate to have Paul Akers, who is a candidate for the United States Senate on the Republican side. He's with us tonight. If you want to learn more, more than just what you saw in the ad, because we're going to ask about that, go to the website, AkersForUSSenate.com. <coughs> in the ad, you talk about common sense. That's right. Uh, you've talked about some things that some people may say are common sense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's common sense for me may not be the same thing as common sense for you. How do you deal with those? How do you deal with those differences? Well, I don't, I don't think that's the case, Dan. You know, I work with people from all over the world, and I have lots of different people, ethnic backgrounds and, and uh, different religious backgrounds, different political persuasions that work for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think common sense is something that might have been planted inside of every human being. I think common sense is the kind of stuff where when you touch the hot flame, you know not to touch it again. Okay. Let's talk about common sense then. Okay. Common sense says that we shouldn't be spending a bazillion dollars on a new military plant uh, to go here in western Washington. Mm -hmm. But there is uh, a congressman who is very powerful. He wants that military plant bought here because it's going to provide more jobs. Mm -hmm. That's common sense too. Whose common sense wins there? No, because it violates the fundamental principle of living within your means. It is not sustainable for the United States to continue to print money and borrow from our enemies. It is not a sustainable model. Whatever benefit we might gain for the short term, Stan, we will pay dearly for it down the road. That As we is, are already That is not today. common sense. That is foolishness. Okay. Let's go to some more key issues. You've got actually quite a lot of issues. And like what uh, then Senator Obama did uh, during his campaign. He put he put himself out there. He put all of his issues out there mm -hmm. in any event. And you've done the same thing. You've listed them all. We're, we can't go over all of them. But the one thing that I really wanted to ask about, because this is something that a lot of people talk about, right? And it's really business principles in government. And so that's that's the big question: Can business principles work in government, especially in light of what the public has seen out of business over the past couple of years? Well, I, see, I'm going to disagree with the premise. I don't think anything, I don't think business is wrong. I think business is good. I'm a, I'm a business guy, and I don't see anything nefarious that business has done. So that's, let's start with that, assuming that's where you were going with that. Well, here's what, I, here's what I'm, I'm mostly talking about, is the, the creation of the, of the derivatives that really tried to create a market out of paper and thin air and then had yeah, false, well, eva false valuations of companies. Well, certainly that was wrong, but, you know, to, to, to use that as the example of business, I think... That's what the public sees today. Yeah. Well, they don't but, see but, your business yeah. because well, you're Well, you know, there are thousands, of, hundreds of thousands of businesses like mine that are doing it right all over the place. And those are the models we need to be following. And, the, and here's the problem, Stan. Mm -hmm. When I was a Boy Scout, I forgot my sleeping bag. You know what? I slept cold that night. I failed. Failure is the most powerful learning tool in the world. We need to let people fail. The reason why the derivative market occurred is because we refuse to let people fail. When we let people fail, they will learn. And until we're willing to do that, we're going to constantly be propping up an unsustainable model. Sounds like that you would have said that we should have let some of the institutions fail. Absolutely that every one of them. I would not have. I, I was, first of all, um, I love George Bush. I think he's a very uh, principled leader, but I was absolutely against what he did in the bailouts, 100%. But see, that's the different kind of leader I am. I'm not afraid to say, to praise someone when they do something right, and also to call them when they do something wrong, as I want the same thing for me. I'm not a perfect human being. I make mistakes. And I think we should be willing to have that dialogue honestly. Okay, you have a specific proposal you call your 10-3 lean program. Right. Uh, let's talk about that. 10 means? 10 means 10%. I have a simple thing. Everything I do in life is very simple. And the reason why I make it simple is for a number of reasons. But the main reason why is I think the maximum amount of people that can understand and get their hold and idea around a principle, the better buy-in you can get. So that's one. Ten means cut taxes by 10% across the board. Cut spending by 10% across the board. Ooh. All programs, even the military. Can you believe that? Even the military. It's been, I don't know, probably at least, well, probably 16 years ago that mm -hmm. uh, Tim Penny, Democratic congressman mm -hmm. from uh, Minnesota, John Kasich, right. Republican congressman from Ohio, proposed to cut spending by 1%, and they were tarred and feathered. Well, 
I'm not afraid of anybody, so I'm, I'm pretty fearless in that regard. So the bottom line is 10% spending and taxes. What that will do, if you do it for three consecutive years, you'll get 27% mm -hmm. cut across the board over the course of three years. It's a, it's a progressive tax that, uh, not, excuse me, progressive cut that allows you to systematically scale back our spending and put more money in the hands of the consumer and the business people to invest in our economy. 27%. The same time, implement a lean strategy. That mm -hmm. is, teach lean thinking. Teach the removal of waste from every process, every day, and every federal government. If you do the first two, 10-3, you will balance the budget in two and a half years. It is a staggering result. If you implement the lean strategy, you could probably reduce the size of government by 50% just with the lean strategy. That's not even taking into effect what will happen at my company. We are constantly reducing the cost of everything. We are constantly increasing the quality of everything. Customers come and want to buy our products. It's, it's amazing what happens when you're focused on delivering to the customer the best result. It's not about us making profit. It's about the customer. And we have taken our eyes off of who the customer is. It's a constituent. Could you imagine waking up tomorrow, Stan, and getting the headlines and say, you know what? Your services, your bus service, your road service, everything is increasing by 10, 20% in quality, and your taxes went down? What would that be like? That would be amazing. We've got that to, would be amazing. It's got doable, to, Stan. Okay, we've got a couple of things we're going to have to get to. Uh, we've got a lot of issues, but let's talk about one. Okay. Middle East and veterans. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm deeply indebted to our veterans and what they've done. I've actually met with veterans today and the service and the sacrifice that they have provided for this country is unparalleled. It's beyond anything I've ever done. So I'm deeply appreciative of them. But, interesting that you should ask that question because I met with them today. And we talked about the VA hospital and we talked about benefits and things like that. And I do not give them a political answer. I do not say, oh, if I'm your next U.S. Senator, I'm going to spend more money for the VA hospital. You know what I told them? I said I won't. What I will do is we will increase the quality of the care for the VA hospital while reducing the cost by teaching lean. Okay. By teaching people to use their head instead of a line item to solve every problem. It's a big, big task because it's a big, huge bureaucracy. Um, if you were to win... People I, are people. I, I, I people are people. Now, speaking of people are people, uh, when you get right down to it, uh, is there a case against Patty Murray? She's, you win the nomination, she's who you have to go against. And well, she's very popular here in the state of right. Washington. Well, the case against Patty Murray is, just simply to put it this way, if we evaluate where we are as a country, she's been in there for 18 years. You have to ask yourself one simple question. Are you better off today than you were before? Has she delivered competent leadership? I don't have to say anything. You just answer the question. Okay. So we've got, uh, what, roughly a minute or so to go. Mm -hmm. and we, again, we've got an hour's worth of show left, but we only have a minute. So okay. um, if you win, mm -hmm. not the nomination, which I intend but to. the election, which I intend why to. is that going to be? Because I think the American people and the people of Washington State can recognize authentic leadership. I think they're done with posers. I think they're done with people who talk in platitudes and they're ready for someone who can deliver the goods because I believe in the genius of the American people. I believe people that are smart and capable and they have the capacity to solve their own problems. Okay, we're gonna let that be the last word. If you want uh, more information about Paul Akers, who is a candidate for United States Senate, and is running very hard, then go to the website, acresforusenate.com. You're going to learn a lot more. And if you don't have the, the uh, answers to your questions, send him an email. And if he doesn't get back to you, let us know, and we'll just give him a call. In any event, that's all for Public Exposure this week. We'll see you right here on Public Exposure next week. Take care. Thanks, Dan.